been talking about coming to Australia for for years, not not just not just when Paul and, and Frank came over here. He had had I don't know what turned him on, but he he figured that Australia was the new frontier, and that he he wanted to be part of it, and uh, he talked about moving and. My family was dead set against it, but we still uh, we still came, and it was to Harold. It was it was a new beginning. It was a, a a new life. We came from a small town called MacFarland in California, and it was just about the same size as Weewa, only not not as progressive as Weewa was. It just uh, where there were big communities very close, like seven miles away, um, was a community of about fifteen thousand or or more, and uh, fifty years ago, sixty years ago, and uh, so anyway, uh, Harold Harold just had his eyes on Australia for for so long. I, it was just the answer to prayers, really. That the, the the vice prime minister came over and was trying to get uh, U.S. cotton growers, and Harold was ready. I mean, he it was it was funny. And then all the, the we met few of the people, but we knew no no uh, other people that came over here except for the four families that came from our Church of the Brethren in MacFarland and with the Davis family. And uh, Mr. Davis thought, well, Harold would, would share crop for him, and Harold said, no, I'm an independent man, uh, and uh, I, can't, I can't share crop. And uh, so he bought up a, at, on the Spring Plains Road, but, Close between here and there, right? I don't know what the desire was, but I'll tell you, he, he was on fire for Australia, and he had been for years. He had been talking about it for ten years before we moved over here, and before I, before Frank and any any of those even thought about it, I imagine, because they were, but they were in the, we were in the prime cotton growing area, and they were in the north of, of the San Joaquin Valley, Frank and, and Paul, and they, they, they grew cotton in colder weather than we did, so they, uh, they just had one gin up there. We had the big cooperative at Matt Farland, and uh, it was a, there was cotton all around us. And he was so active in the Farm Bureau. And the Farm Bureau really took hold of it straight away when, when the uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister came over. And uh, it was just the whole system in our particular area. There was lots of, lots of excitement about Australia and coming over here. Opportunities, cheap land, cheap, uh, uh, not, not, it was a beginning of an industry here. Uh, that they found out that they couldn't grow it up up in the north because it molded and it was too too damp up in the tropics and it had to be down in a drier area and and this is absolutely the the perfect so I did, we just moved from one one uh, weather to another to the same weather in Australia and it uh, and. Just people were lovely here in we in in Weevil, uh, and uh, we were we were accepted, and uh, we were happy straight away. You know, I, the the kids were accepted in the school and and everything. Clinton went back for university, and then uh, we brought him home one Christmas, and he said, "I've transferred everything to Brisbane," and he said, "I'm." I said, I'm, I'm coming back to Australia. He said, I, I don't want to live over there. We, uh, I showed some of the men how to set side and uh, 
when when we arrived, when when I arrived, Harold had planted a crop, 400 acres of cotton, but it had been flooded, and we only harvested 40 40 bales of cotton off of that 400 400 acres. So that was a a, a complete. I mean, it was basically uh, a failure, and uh, that was our first crop. And we, when we, when we came, we borrowed a tractor from one of our neighbors and drove into the property. And uh, I saw where I was going to live in the <coughs> in the welded shop because our house wasn't finished. And uh, so that was. We lived in the welding shop for, I guess, for about four months before they finished the house. Everybody was working. I mean, I mean, uh, I was working and, and uh, doing more things than, than just being a homemaker. Uh, like, uh, I mean, I drove all the cotton to the cotton gin. I. Uh, uh, I worked out in the paddock sometimes, not, not, uh, not steady, not doing anything, but just for an emergency. And uh, we, uh, yes, it was, it was, it was hard work. It was hard work. It was getting, you know, doing home and, and getting the trailers into the cotton gin. Uh, it took quite a while to, to haul them from. Uh, from Green Bar in, into the cotton gin here. Well, the first cotton that, that uh, Frank and, and Paul grew, they sent to Brisbane to, to have it, it gin, so there wasn't any gin here at, at that time, but uh, uh, they were building the gin when, when we came, uh, when I came. Uh, and. Uh, it was exciting, exciting, and everybody around the area, it was, it was a new industry and it was really, a, it was a talk of the town. And uh, <coughs> there were uh, lots of, of, uh, of so-called Yankees coming, and we were all called Yanks, and uh, it was, uh, the country people accepted us much more so than the town people did. Of course, the country people knew us better, and uh, that was wonderful. Uh, really enjoyed all the balls and things that we went to when we first began. Uh, but the uh, the cotton gin, Paul and, and Frank were always in Jack Kitchens. Uh, were some of the first people that. Really, Albert Davis and and uh, um, Clark, Clark White and uh, C. D. White uh, were the main goers and the main pushers, and uh, it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful to to see the beginning of it. Not that I had much influence or anything in it. But it was wonderful to, to be living at that time and, and seeing this industry blossom.